Hi there, and welcome to Red Sweet Outdoors. The topic for today is cowboy coffee, and I will show you how to do it step by step. In a recent video I got a comment that there is a lack of videos that show you how to make a good cup of cowboy coffee with all the steps included. Uh, so I want to thank you PEG for that comment and you gave me a suggestion for a video topic. And today I'm going to do just that. But before we get down to business there are a few things I'd like to clarify before we begin. What I refer to as cowboy coffee is the traditional way of making coffee uh, that includes a heat source, a grinded coffee and a pot and some water. Uh, in Sweden uh, cowboy coffee is really not a thing. Uh, we simply call it cook coffee or boiled coffee. And uh, I have no concept of uh, cowboy coffee before I went on YouTube and realized that no one really knew what I was talking about uh, when coffee making before I started naming it cowboy coffee. And then all of a sudden all, everybody knew what I was talking about. Number two, uh, as always uh, this recipe is adapted to be made outdoors with a minimum of gear. So uh, all good advices on what kind of temperature the water should have and such. Well really I don't use a thermometer in the woods so uh, I boil it. Uh, when it's boiling, it's done. And number three, uh, there's no such thing as a perfect mix of beans I can recommend. Uh, because it comes down to where you live. Uh, my typical advice is use a coffee that's made for the kind of water you have where you live. Or you're supposed to boil it. Uh, if you have soft water, uh, do it from a manufacturer that manufactures the beans for soft water. And the same with hard water. Uh, and... Uh, Pick a kind that has the flavor you like. Uh, if you grind your coffee yourself from beans, make it as coarse as you possibly can do. Uh, and if you don't do it by yourself, try to find the most coarse ground coffee you can find. Uh, we'll get into why a little a bit later. And number four, perhaps the most important uh, pointer here. Uh, there are a ton of self-appointed experts on how to make a good cup of coffee. Yours truly included. Uh, and what we all are telling you is how to make the kind of coffee we like. If you do it in another way and end up with a cup of coffee that you really enjoy, then you're doing it right. Okay, what do you need to make cowboy coffee? Well, you basically need four things. Water, coffee, a heat source, and uh, today I'm going to use my bush box, but you can use right about anything. You can use the trangia, open fire, gas stove, you name it. And then you need some kind of a kettle or a pot. Uh, if I'm doing coffee just for myself, I usually do it straight in my mug. Uh, so that's coffee for one, uh, less to pack, and I get the right amount from the beginning. If you're doing for more than one people, uh, some kind of coffee kettle. Uh, this is from Matranga, and uh, two or three persons will get a healthy serving from this one. And today I'm going to use this when I'm doing my cowboy coffee. So that's what you need. Okay. I find up the bush box and it's time to add some water and uh, I'm gonna make myself what I consider a cup of coffee and uh, for most people that's two so uh, it's about four deciliters something like that and then you just take the coffee Add it straight in and uh, two and a half scoops that's what I like uh, that's a half so 
pull it all in. So it's floating at the top. And then just put the lid on and let the fire work its magic. And uh, while we are waiting for that to boil, uh, there is different kinds, uh, when we talk of cowboy coffee, very much secret ingredients. Uh, they sh say you should add eggshells afterwards uh, to make the grounds uh, fall to the bottom more quickly and uh, takes out a bit of the acidity too. Uh, that you should boil the water first and then add the coffee. Uh, in my experience, if you boil with the coffee grounds in from the beginning, that takes away a lot of the acidity. And uh, carrying around eggshells just to make a cup of coffee, nah, not for me. Um, that's overcomplicating things quite a bit. And then I see uh, pe people taking pieces of spruce, putting in the pipe, not the exhaust pipe, but the pouring pipe, uh, to act as some kind of filter. And uh, I will show you a dead easy way to get the way the coffee grounds afterwards. And all it takes is some water and a little time. Uh, I think these spruce branches, uh, it may look cool, but uh, I doubt that it has some really good effect. So uh, you can try it if you like, but uh, the grounds will go straight through it. Well, now we just wait. As you can see, it's starting to boil now, and if you have a full pot, uh, this is the point where you should take it away. Uh, because this kind of coffee have a tendency to boil outside the kettle, it's very full. But uh, now it's close to a rolling boil, so I'll take it away. I'm going to just let this sit here for a while, and I will use that time to extinguish my burner. But now the ground is starting to settling a bit um, and to give them that extra kick to get the grounds down to the bottom of the kettle we add some cold water and a couple of tablespoons maybe three should be suffice so like that and that's the kick you need to get the grounds down the bottom. And now it's just perfect time to just pour some real good coffee. As you can see, it's almost totally clear. Even when I come down to the last bits. Here you can see what's left inside. All the dregs. So, final test. Is it any good?
Oh, yes. So what's the difference between uh, ordinary uh, brewed coffee at home and you and your electric brewer and uh, this cowboy coffee? Uh, well, for once, uh, one of the two major differences is that uh, since you are actually letting the water boil, you release more of the flavors uh, in your coffee. And as I said before, you kind of boil away much of the acidity, so it has a bit rounder taste um, than the, the electric brew. And uh, since you don't filter anything away, uh, the oils that you release from the coffee grounds, they end up in your cup. And me for once, I think that's an advantage. I think that's a plus. Uh, other people, they kind of disagree with these oils, mostly because they are not used to them. Uh, but I think they contribute to a, a more round, balanced taste. So, uh, yeah, basically any kind of coffee you do with a paper filter, that takes away those oils. And, and while metal filters or like this, no filter at all, they preserve the oil. Uh, and that's a bonus for me. And I mean, as you see, it, it's, it's no magic to do a cup of coffee. It's easy as pie, or even more easy, you can say. Uh, if you can boil water and use a scoop, then you can do a cup of carbo coffee. And uh, the measures, well, they vary. Um, I have a m medium roasted coffee. And uh, it's it's easy to overdose your coffee when, with medium roast. Uh, it's not very forgiving. Uh, doesn't really bring out the flavor more. Uh, if you have a dark roasted, you you can add more without. It just turns bitter. You get more flavors. Uh, I think the most important thing is that you have a very coarse ground, uh, because. Uh, doing coffee this way with a very fine ground coffee, uh, you, there's no way you're going to get rid of the, uh, the grounds. They will end up in your cup. Uh, for example, if you take uh, espresso ground, it's very, very fine. It's almost like a powder. Uh, there's no way you're going to get that to end up in the bottom because it's going to be everywhere in a cup. You have to filter it out. Uh, so the most coarse ground you can get. I think that's the key to success. And what kind of coffee beans? Take the one you really like. That's it for now. Uh, on kind of popular demand, uh, another coffee video. Uh, and I hope all the steps you need are there, because these are all the steps I take. Uh, it's all there. There's no secrets. Just go ahead and do it. And if you find other tips online uh, on things to add and things to do in a very special way, feel free to try them. But uh, for me, it's just extra hassle and I don't think it will improve my coffee very much. Because for me, this is as close to perfection you get. Well, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up. And uh, feel free to spam me with comments uh, how you do the coffee. Uh, I'm up for new ideas, but uh, I'm a bit conservative. You might have realized. But I'm always uh, interested in your comments, so keep them coming. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, uh, consider pressing that subscribe button. And uh, then you will get a notification when I'm out to doing more shenanigans in the woods. But until next time, take care and cheers.